So, hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This video is about uh, a cut and etch test that I did uh, several videos ago on a MIG joint, and I saw what appeared to be a lamination in the base metal, and I said I'm just going to have to test further to see if it really was. So I'm going to do that this week. That means I'm going to polish to a finer polish, look at it at higher magnification, see if I can really characterize that indication. Or if, is it an indication or is it a flaw? We're going to find out. At the end of the video, I'm going to talk about uh, a shielding gas issue I had a month or two ago and an old timer technique that goes against science but seems to work. All right, let's get into it. So in a previous video, I was running an uphill outside corner joint on quarter inch thick material. That's roughly six millimeters thick. And I was kind of playing with the settings, playing with the techniques, trying not to leave undercut at the same time, trying to penetrate all the way into the root of the joint. And so when I, when I cut it and then put a quick polish on it and then etched it, swab etched it, while I was concentrating on looking at the penetration, I noticed that dark straight line there and it appeared to be a possible lamination. So I mentioned in that video I was going to have to look at that further. And so that's what I'm doing in this video. I'm going to take the other half of that piece. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the actual piece, but I had the other side of it. And I'm going to polish it further and look at it and see if it indeed is a lamination or just an indication. So in order to do that, I'm going to need a finer polish so that I can look at it at higher magnification without seeing all a bunch of scratches. And so to do that, I'm going to mount this thing in some two-part epoxy. Now this epoxy is not designed for metallographic examination. It's just, it's just something I could get off Amazon really cheaply. And I'm going to lay down the piece in the bottom of the cup there and then just pour like a, an amount of epoxy over that thing and let it cure overnight. And then I'll, I'll be able to polish it without the corners hanging up on the polishing wheels and jerking it all over the place and causing a mess. So that's sort of got a, like a little hockey puck now. This is the day later, roughly 20 hours later. It hardened up nice and hard. And I'm going to cut the plastic off of that thing. And uh, you can see a little Band-Aid on my thumb there. Things didn't go so well when I was opening up a drill bit earlier today out of a blister pack. But, you know, stuff happens. So now I've got a little hockey puck here, and that's going to let me polish a lot easier than trying to polish just that surface alone. Now, Walter Surface Technology sent me this polishing kit a year or two ago, and um, it is a really nice kit, and I haven't been able to do much with it, but this is a good opportunity to use it. It's got a like a three or four step polishing system on it. So I'm starting off with like a 120 grit flap disc here and I'm gradually working down finer and finer grit till I'm going to use finally a final cloth with sort of a polishing, almost a, a polishing compound at the very end to get it to pretty much a mirror finish. One, one concept in cut and etch polish is that the, the better the finish, uh, the, the easier the etch works. So now I've got a mirror finish like this, that etchant really, really goes to work and really reveals stuff. You can see, now I see a line in both members. And so once I get this thing done, I am actually bought a little 15X macro lens and a phone case for my iPhone that lets me screw the lens into my phone case for, for things like this. I want to be able to take close-up pictures of cut and etch things. And so you see that straight line there. You play the line back and forth, what looked like a dark line in the earlier thing. Now that I've got it really polished and magnified, it's, it's just a line. And that is actually something, something that's pretty common, in fact. All right, I got this email from a retired metallurgist, and here's what it said about that line. Hey, Jody, what you saw in today's video is not a lamination. It said, what you saw is rather light center line segregation left over from the, steel, from the steel casting process. It's not a desirable condition, but it is acceptable for many applications, especially in low carbon steel. Okay, the, the YouTube comment said basically the same thing, and then it got me to thinking of some of my own personal experience as I used to see this occasionally on a weld. Uh, 032 thickness, cobalt alloy, L605, sometimes we would, and also in ink and L718, sometimes we would see a straight line indication right down the bead would fail x-ray. And we, because we didn't know what it was, it didn't seem like it should be there, we did some testing, cut, 
polish etch at high magnification and what we saw was an alignment of grain boundaries in the center of the weld because the center of the weld is the last place to solidify and you can have a center line alignment of grain boundaries right there and it show an indication on an x-ray film. The weld looked great but we had to figure a way around it and it was kind of like slowing travel speed down and then adding some heat sink to solidify quicker seemed to, seemed to help. So I tested this straight line because it looked like a, a lamination. Thought, thought, well, I want to test it further because I want to know. By researching, I found it's not a very common thing in today's steel practices, but I wanted to find out, and that's how we learned. So, on with the video. Let's talk about now the gas shielding issue I had. Before I left for vacation, I was running some uphill joints using MIG. R almost 20 volts and 250 inches a minute using 035 wire. And... I got things dialed in fairly close, like a pretty smooth arc, no complaints there, looking okay. Any, any problems were just my rustiness from not doing this all the time, but things were going pretty good. Looked like it was biting into the leading edge, getting good penetration, wasn't looking too ropey or anything like that. I did a, a T-joint. I also did a lap joint. I'm just using these really small pieces just to kind of get the gun, just to kind of get the machine dialed in. And so I'd have direction before I left for vacation. So when I got back from vacation, I could just hit the ground running and not have to start from scratch. So this is the lap joint. Again, I'm just tweaking here and there. 19.9 volts, 250 inches a minute, 035 wire, 7525 shielding gas, also called C25. And uh, I was probably using about 25 CFH on the flow rate. And so those are nothing to write home about, but it was running pretty smooth. And then I left for vacation, came back, same settings, same gas flow rate, everything the same except I used a, light, a slightly bigger piece because I wanted to have plenty to do some testing on, and it just did not go like it should. Something was a little bit off. Everything looked different, a little bit ropey bead. It stood up higher, more convex. And so I took the cylinder loose, undid the flow meter and everything off of it, rolled it on the floor like this. This is a, this is an old timer thing. I've been doing it for years. If I come up, if something's not right, I'll try this because it, yeah, it takes about five or 10 minutes to do it. But in my experience, it's worth the effort. And I know that the physics and the science aren't there necessarily to support it. It's just one of those old timer things that seems to work. You can look, you can Google on forums and everything about rolling the cylinders to mix gases and they, they'll tell you it can't come unmixed and, and unless it's, it's sub-zero temperatures and all that. All I know is that if something's not running good and you roll the cylinder, oftentimes it really helps. Now those bottom two welds there are after rolling the cylinder and you can see they're a little less crowned up, a little less convexity than the top weld which was done before rolling. Well, that was a random video, cut and etch stuff. Shielding gas stuff, MIG welding uphill techniques. Sometimes things don't always go in a, in a straight line, do they? All right, hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.